welcome back to Glaciers and Glacial Geomorphology. In these next two videos we're talking about the basal ice layer. Basal ice is ice which occurs at the bottom of many glaciers and it isn't formed by the uh, deposition and recrystallization of snow at the surface but is either formed or modified by processes operating at or close to the bed. Processes for, for example such as debris entrainment. It's really important for us to understand the basal ice layer. It's central to a lot of what we're talking about in this module, partly because the basal ice layer reflects processes that are happening in the inaccessible interior of a, of a glacier, but we can see the basal ice and therefore figure out something about what's happening in the interior when we see the basal ice at the margin, for example, as in this picture, or if we can see basal ice uh, at the bottom of an ice core. The basal ice also impacts the rheology of the glacier, the flow, um, the flow characteristics of the glacier. By changing the characteristics of the lowest layers of the, ice, both of the ice, both in terms of chemical composition and in terms of physical or mechanical composition, debris content, for example, friction against the bed, uh, the flow properties of the ice, uh, of the glacier as a whole, very much depend on what's happening in the basal ice layer. The basal ice layer is also very much the business end of the geomorphology. This is where the ice is in contact with the bed, erosion, transport, deposition are concentrated in this zone, and the basal ice layer, if it contains a great deal of debris, is a particularly important agent for some of those geomorphic processes. Debris in the basal ice layer is an effective agent of erosion against the bed. The basal ice layer containing debris is an important transport uh, pathway for debris through the glacier. The basal ice layer also interrupts our ability to interpret climate records on the basis of ice cores through glaciers. Once the ice core reaches down into the basal ice layer, it isn't anywhere near as simple to try to reconstruct a climate history from the ice because the ice here isn't simply recrystallized from surface precipitation. Something different is happening at the bed. And so if we can understand what's happening at the bed, it helps us to understand uh, what's happening in our uh, ice core in terms of the climate record, in terms of how far down the ice core we can go reconstructing climate before we encounter uh, the interrupting effects of basal processes. So there are lots of reasons why it's important for us to get to grips with, get to grips with what's happening in the basal ice layer. So, as always, there's some reading for you to do. I've given you the very basic background reading from the old textbook. Uh, section 5.6 will give you the basics uh, that you need to have before you really get started. And then there's another old paper from me there, the 1997 uh, review paper on the basal ice layer of glaciers and ice sheets. Uh, maybe have a look at that before you start reading the more advanced and more recent literature. And there's just one uh, case study example there for you to have a look at. Uh, Gusens et al. Uh, 2016, uh, looking at basal ice. Uh, at the bottom of the Neem ice core. So have a look at that as a way into the more advanced uh, and the more recent literature on this topic. Now there's a number of things that you need to get your head around talking about basal ice and by the time we finish these sessions um, these are the kinds of questions that you should be able to provide uh, answers to. What is the basal ice layer? How does a basal ice layer form? Who cares? Why is it important? How does it affect glaciers, glacier dynamics for example? And how does it affect glacial geomorphology and glacial landforms that we're going to come on to talk about in the next few sections uh, of this module? And finally, think of this also as a nice case study of the science of glaciology. I'll run very briefly through a little bit of the history of how people have investigated the basal ice layer, and that's a nice case study uh, of glaciology in action. So make sure that you can explain how, how the study of the basal ice layer has developed over the last many decades. So, what is basal ice? Well, basal ice, says there, is ice that's been directly affected by processes operating at the bed. In other words, it isn't simply formed by the accumulation, the burial, the recrystallization and compression of snow to make ice. The bulk of the end glacial fasces is made that way, and so we can reconstruct climate by drilling down through those surface layers which are being progressively buried into the glacier to create uh, the bulk of the glacier ice in most, most glaciers. Well, basal ice is different from that. The basal ice is ice that's been directly affected by processes operating at the bed. So it has physical characteristics and chemical characteristics that are different from the end glacial fasces above. Now, 
The base lice layer can be uh, all sorts of different thicknesses in different glaciers. Some glaciers have no base lice at all, so zero thickness. In other glaciers, it goes typically to a maximum of maybe some uh, meters or tens of meters. And we've picked up uh, basal ice at the bottoms of lots of the major deep ice cores. You can pick it up through subglacial observations. You might have done some reading about subglacial access to, to the glacier bed, uh, and you can pick up the base ice layer there. Or you can make observations at the margin. You, you know about the flow pattern through a glacier and the ice that you're seeing right at the edge of the glacier is ice, is ice which has traveled close to the bed and so that's somewhere that you're that's where you're likely to pick up uh, the basal ice layer if there is one. It, it occurs in large ice sheets, it occurs in small glaciers, it isn't confined to one or another. It occurs in glaciers with a variety of different temperature regimes but it tends to be thicker, tends to be uh, better developed in, in, in cold polar or subpolar. Uh, glaciers and it's thinner or non-existent in temperate glaciers where there's lots of melting at the bed. In order to generate a, a decent basal ice layer you need to be accreting material at the bed, adding material at the bed rather than losing material. So if you're melting off lots of ice at the base of the glacier uh, in, a, in a temperate thermal regime that's not conducive to the formation of a thick basal ice layer. The base lice has distinctive physical and chemical, and we're going to talk about stable isotopes later on, but it has distinctive characteristics. And we can use those distinctive characteristics of the base lice layer both to reconstruct how the base ice layer is being created and therefore to reconstruct processes that are happening in the interior of the glacier. And we can also think about how those distinctive uh, characteristics are going to impact on the behaviour of the glacier, both in terms of uh, glacier dynamics, for example, how the glacier moves, and also in terms of glacial geomorphology uh, and the formation of, uh, of glacial landforms, which we're coming on to uh, as we move forward through the module. So these pictures show you what you're familiar with from previous sessions, uh, non-basal ice or n-glacial fasces ice. These pictures come from the Russell Glacier uh, in West, West Greenland. And you can see there the kind of ice that you're familiar with us talking about in the previous sessions, uh, diffused and banded fasces of the, of the n of the N-glacial uh, ice sequence there. You can see clean ice resting on bedrock, no ba base ice visible there. And in the bottom right hand picture, we've hacked a little bit of, of, the, of the ice out of the glacier there, and you can see it's clean and it's bubbly. There's not loads of debris in there, and there are bubbles in there. Now, just a very quick comparison between that non-basal ice, or that standard uh, N-glacial, glacier ice as we'd normally call it, with basal ice, you can see two big differences straight away in these pictures. First of all, the basal ice typically has loads of debris in it. It's in contact with the bed, we're accreting new ice typically at the bed, or we're, we're, we're operating ice processes, glacial processes, in contact with the bed of the glacier. So the entrainment of debris into the ice is a very common, um, very common thing to be happening, and therefore we have debris-rich basal ice. The second thing to notice here in the bottom picture, where I'm just holding up a little uh, sliver of ice uh, in thin section, holding it up against the sky, is that as well as seeing debris in the ice, also notice the lack of bubbles in the ice there. So if I just flick quickly back to the, the previous slide uh, where you were looking at the, the, the bubbly white uh, glacier ice, compare that with the clear, uh, bubble-free, dirtier, debris-rich basal ice. We'll be thinking about that later on when we're thinking about the clues that are telling us about the, potent, the possible origins uh, of where this basal ice uh, came from. Now, in the, certainly in the older literature, in, in your basic uh, reading that you'll be doing uh, to, to get you started into this topic, you'll find that we talk a lot about uh, a number of particular fasces within the basal ice. One of these is the basal stratified fasces, and here's a few pictures uh, that just illustrate that. And you can see straight away from the kind of stripy nature of the, uh, of, of the debris in between the, the, the clean ice layers here, in these photos, the lighter colours are the debris and the darker colours uh, are the, the, the debris-free and, and largely bubble-free ice. But that kind of stripy nature, that tells you why we call it the stratified fasces, because it does have this stratified appearance. The second fasces that we commonly talk about is the dispersed fasces. And again, you can see we get the name from the, the dis 
disposition of debris uh, within the within the ice. Uh, in this case, it isn't layered; it is dispersed or scattered through the ice. Individual uh, fragments or, or particles of fine debris, typically, or aggregates, sometimes called clots. Uh, these aggregates of debris uh, dispersed throughout the fasces, largely. Um, low gas content, low, low bubble content compared with end glacial fasces uh, and the bubbles appearing in particular uh, patterns or particular dispositions within the ice. So we have the stratified fasces, we have the dispersed fasces and the third type of uh, basal ice that we commonly talk about are these basal debris bands where discrete bands or single layers of debris cut through otherwise uh, debris debris free, much cleaner ice. These might be cutting through layers of end glacial fasces, uh, so you have a, a, a layer of basally derived debris uh, or a band of basally derived debris cutting up into the into the end glacial fasces, or as in this picture uh, we actually have bands of debris cutting up into the dispersed fasces above it. Now these different fasces occur in sequences of different types in different locations. So this is a, the sequence from the, the Russell Glacier in, in West Greenland, where we've got a metre or so of stratified fasces at the base of the sequence, and this is overlain by fact several, maybe up to 10 or 15 metres of dispersed fasces, but in the bottom part of that dispersed fasces layer we have these debris bands cutting through into the dispersed fasces, intercalated uh, with the dispersed fasces ice. So there's stratified ice, there's dispersed fasces ice, and there are debris bands cutting through the dispersed fasces as well. By contrast here, this is a photograph from uh, the summit ice cap of the volcano Cotopaxi in Ecuador, and here we have a different kind of sequence where we have the stratified fasces at the bottom, and then it goes straight up into end glacial fasces. There is no dispersed fasces, and there are no debris bands cutting up out of the stratified fasces into the, into the layers above. It's a much simpler sequence with just those two fasces, the end glacial and then the single fasces of basal ice, uh, the stratified fasces. Here's another example, this is from the Athabasca Glacier in British Columbia in Canada, and here there is no basal ice. You're looking at clean end glacial fasces, bubbly, uh, foliated uh, white glacier ice uh, resting on the glacier bed. So you might ask, we've been asking why does basal ice form? You can equally ask here, well why did basal ice not form here? Or maybe it did form here, but then was subsequently destroyed. I mentioned earlier that base ice can be mel or ice can be melted off from the base of a glacier. So perhaps base ice is created in some location underneath the glacier, and then maybe as we move into a warmer zone close to the margin, it, it melts off again. I'm not saying that's what's happening here, but we'll be talking about that kind of sequence of events at the bed of the glacier when we talk about basal thermal regime and basal thermal zones. The geography of the basal thermal regime regime underneath the glacier can lead to different things happening in different places which can lead to the entrainment and then the loss of basal ice or it can lead to erosion in some locations, deposition in other locations. That geography of basal thermal regime is going to turn out to be really important to us uh, later on in the module. Another characteristic of the basal ice which will be useful to us when we're coming to think about how it's created and how the debris is entrained, for example, is that there's often a great deal of structural deformation visible within the basal ice. That isn't to say that only debris-bearing basal ice can be deformed, but it shows up very well, when you, particularly where you have these stratified fasces with the layers in, you can pick up very easily, as in these pictures, uh, you can pick up very easily where folding or thrusting is occurring uh, within the ice affecting that basal layer. And certainly th these pictures maybe give you some first clues as to at least one of the mechanisms by which uh, debris can be entrained into the basal ice as a result of this structural deformation, this folding, this um, thrusting, this rolling of debris uh, into, the deforming, uh, into the deforming lowest layers of the ice. So that kind of raises a, a question for us. If we have these thick sequences, what we sometimes call stacked sequences, on the idea that they're building up somehow, um, I was going to say one on top of the other, but perhaps for base lines we should be beginning to think more, we'll come on to this next time, thinking of layers being added at the bottom of the pile uh, and accreting new layers onto the base of the glacier. But are these thick sequences, are they indeed stacked up by accretion or are they stacked up 
by deformation, by folding and thrusting of perhaps a single layer into multiple layers by that tectonic uh, deformation. And that's the kind of question that we, that we can usefully ask about the origin of the base lines. But I guess at this stage, one of the things you, you might be asking, I hope there are lots of other things you're asking, but one of the things you might be asking is, well, who cares? Why do we care about the basal ice layer? Why are we having uh, such a, an important central section of the module uh, focusing on basal ice? Well, like I hinted at the beginning of the, this little video, there are lots of different reasons why it's important to understand the basal ice layer. Number one, the basal ice provides a record of what's happening in the interior of the glacier and it carries that record into locations where we can access it. So we can see base lice at the margin or we can pull base lice out of a deep ice core and we can use that to figure out what's happening in the interior uh, of the glacier. Secondly, the base lice is a key control on a key part of the glacier itself. Base lice base of the glacier, well you remember from your earlier lectures on glacier dynamics, that the, the dynamics at the base of the glacier are particularly important to glacier motion, both in terms of glacier sliding, but also in terms of where the bulk of deformation of glacier ice occurs. Think of the shear stress equation in Glenn's flow law and the vertical strain profile through the glacier. Also think of the temperature profile through the glacier and how that, through A in Glenn's flow law, how that affects uh, the deformation rate. And you'll very quickly begin to think, oh yeah, basal friction rocks in the basal ice against the, against the substrate. The yield stress, therefore, the glacier dynamics. And of course, glacier dynamics then has an impact on, on gross morphology of the glacier. So you're beginning now maybe to see that there are things to do with the basal ice layer which feed back to things that we've talked about previously uh, in the module. Turning around and looking forwards through the module, you can also hopefully see that this is really the basal ice layer is really important for the geomorphology. If debris is being picked up into the glacier, so the glacier is eroding and entraining material, well that's the basal ice layer then where that's happening. Subglacial erosion, subglacial entrainment, the base lice is effective there. If material is then being transported within the glacier, having been entrained from the bed, well again, that's the base lice layer is doing that transporting. And if we then release the material from, from that basal layer, well, glacial deposition, again, the base lice layer and the debris from within the base lice layer playing a really important part there in, 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 in that final stage, if you like, of the glacial geomorphological process. And like I said before, it's also important, not so much for this module, but for the other module that I know a lot of you are studying at the moment, the base ice layer disrupts the ice core record of climate change. So we need to understand how that disruption is occurring so that we can correctly interpret or we can correctly draw limits to our interpretation of ice cores uh, through glaciers that have um, base ice layers. So as it says there on that, that uh, bottom of that final slide, the base ice layer is an agent of geomorphology, a control on glacier dynamics, and a tool for inferring subglacial environments. So we do care about it. It's a really important part of uh, understanding glaciers and glacial geomorphology. And what we're going to do in the next video is move on to talk a little bit about, well, how does the basal ice layer form then? And so what can the basal ice layer tell us about what else is going on in the glacier and how is it important for understanding what happens in terms of uh, glacial geomorphology and landforms? So we'll do that in the next video.